Hi everybody, welcome back to Connor Dimino's farm. In the kitchen today, we are going to be making some ice cream. One of my kids' favorite kind of ice cream is cookies and cream ice cream, so I'm gonna show you how we do that. We will be very loosely following a recipe from this book. Um, I do tend to change and adapt my recipes over time to what we like and what suits us best. So I will give you the original recipe, but I will also show you my version of the recipe. You can make either, they both taste great. All right, I'm gonna show you what we need and let's get started. First thing you're going to need is some sort of ice cream maker. I have this lovely Cuisinart ice cream maker and the book that goes with it. But I know lots of people that also use their KitchenAid ice cream maker. It all works out sort of the same way. You're going to need some whole milk. In our case, it's raw milk from our cow. You're going to need cream, whipping cream. If you are separating your raw milk, you can use the cream from your raw milk. White sugar. I also use some maple syrup. Um, I actually use a combination of the two uh, because we make our own maple syrup. Some vanilla. And in this case, we're also going to be using some Oreos. On making ice cream, you can actually use many different additives. We are using Oreos in this case because we're making cookies and cream, but I have made uh, ice cream using fruits. I have made ice cream using M&Ms or Smarties or um, chocolate chips and mint and uh, lots of different things. You can cut up chocolate bars Anything that you really kind of like, you can add as an additive at the very end of making this ice cream. So um, don't be shy just because the recipes call for certain things. Try stuff out. We've had some flops, but we've had some really good stuff too. You can see this book is uh, very, very well loved. So we need a cup and a half of whole milk. So you can use store-bought milk. We are using our fresh raw milk. Uh, one and one eighth cups of sugar. I usually do half of white sugar and half of maple syrup. I have tried this entirely using maple syrup and unfortunately the ice cream does not set. So you do need to have white sugar in this case. You're going to need three cups of heavy cream or the cream that you skim off the top of your whole milk and one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract. I, I love Watkins. We're also going to add at the end these lovely Oreos, but not in their whole form. We're gonna cut these up. Um, I also have right here, just to show you as a sample, you can get these little um, mini Reese's Pieces. Those are really good cut up as well. The one thing when you are making ice cream and you're using an ice cream machine, the inner part of the ice cream machine needs to be frozen. So I actually have two different machines and two different insides and I keep them in the freezer at all times. So whenever I want to make ice cream, I can just grab them and pull them out. I keep them in a plastic bag so they stay relatively clean and then I'm just able to pick them up and carry them upstairs. To my glass mixing bowl, I am going to add our one and a half cups of whole milk, which I have to shake because there's cream on the top of it. And here's a variation. I actually add two cups of milk due to our heavy cream content and because the whipping cream that I have purchased is not exactly three cups. So I am putting more of our milk in to account for that. And then we are going to add our whipping cream. The total amount of liquid in this recipe is four and a half cups. If when I pour the cream in, it doesn't equal four and a half cups, I will top it up with our milk. Our milk is very high in cream. And we are going to add our one and a half tablespoons of vanilla. And yes, I totally just glug it in. We are going to add our one and an eighth cup of sugar. Cousin actually had the best saying for this. I pour it until my ancestors tell me that's enough. I actually don't put the required amount of sugar in because it's too sweet. And I am adding my maple syrup. And the same thing with the maple syrup. I just pour until my ancestor tell me that that's enough. It seems to work every single time. So 
Why change it? And we're going to stir all this together. You can stir vigorously. Work out your frustrations. I like to stir this until you can't feel the uh, sugar granules uh, moving around on the stirrer anymore. Now you will notice that this is actually an off cream color and that off cream color is just due to the dark maple syrup that we put in it. I also like to store, stir it vigorously enough that I get a really good foam on the top. Just keep stirring, just keep stirring. So the inside of the Cuisinart machine, this is the lid, this is the stirring paddle, and this is what the machine looks like inside. And we're just going to go, it just has an on off button. It's very simplistic. We're going to go ahead and get this plugged in. Take the machine out of the plastic bag. And this is what the machine looks like on the inside. So this is frozen. I keep it in the freezer upside down because there is a little bit of a space in there. And as it melts, it'll go down and fill the space. So I like to make sure that the top is very cold. I'm going to pop this into the machine, like this, and then inside of that is this little guy. It just sits in. And our next step is you can put this on and turn it on, but I find it gets pretty dirty doing that way. So what I tend to do is I will turn it on, pour the milk in, and then put the lid on. Now this is very loud, which is why I'm explaining this ahead of time. You can see. The other thing you'll notice is that I am holding the paddle down and that's because I don't want a significant amount of the ice cream mixture to get underneath the paddle and therefore causing it to pop up a little bit. Now we let it sit for 25 minutes and through the time I will check on it so you can see here that it's mixing. During that 25 minutes, I'm going to go ahead and cut my Oreos. If it's a regular size package, you are going to probably cut uh, about one and three quarter rows. If it's the family size pack, you're gonna cut one and a half rows and you're just gonna cut them into small pieces. Um, and I have ice cream containers here that I reuse when we are in the off season and we don't have ice cream. This is, you know, we just buy it. And this is the extra container in case the ice cream overflows, which it has done for me on occasion. But we are just going to reuse this and the ice cream will fit in it perfectly. At this point, we are about 15 minutes into the making of the ice cream and you can see that it is starting to thicken up a little bit. Uh, we haven't had to do anything else at this point. We just let it run through. At about the 20 minute mark, I like to check to make sure that it is thickening up enough so that I will be able to add. And you can see it's about the consistency of soft ice cream at this point. It's thickening up. It's looking good. It's sticking to my spatula. So it is ready to go ahead and add our Oreo cookies. So I always make sure that I'm very careful to cut the Oreo cookies onto a placemat that easily folds up so that I can carefully pour them into the mixing machine while it is mixing. And then you're going to let it continue to mix for an additional five minutes. Sometimes your additives will kind of get stuck around the top there. So I just use my spatula to push it down and just make sure it's all mixing through. I just maneuver it all around. No matter what additive you add, it is going to clump up a little bit. So mixing it through with your spatula is a great thing. It's done now. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to scoop it out. Now with your ice cream machines, please make sure you do not use metal on them. You will scratch your machines. Use a spatula or use a wooden spoon. Do not use a metal spoon. You will wreck your machine. Unfortunately, one that I purchased secondhand was scratched super, super badly. I was still able to use it, but it is not the one I reached for first because it is um, not the greatest, but I didn't, I think I only paid like five bucks for it. So it's forgivable. Even still for longevity of your machine, use a wooden spoon or a spatula. So go ahead, you're going to smush that into whatever container you are using to store it in. You can see I 
um, reusing the ice cream container like we talked about and I'm just going to scrape out as much of the ice cream as I can as quickly as I can because this does melt very very quickly it very quickly turns into a milkshake leave your ice cream that is soft in the freezer for 12 to 24 hours I just usually leave it overnight if I make it one day it's ready to go the next day um, just you can eat it soft it just going to melt very 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 quickly and it will be more like a, a milkshake instead of ice cream all right guys welcome back we have been 24 hours their ice cream is in here now with homemade ice cream you do need to let it warm up a little bit so take it out of your freezer give it about five minutes or so and then you can go ahead and eat it and i'll show you why oh i grabbed a fork let's not grab a fork let's grab a spoon so this has been out a couple minutes already in the time it took me to set up the camera and get going but normally this is pretty hard and you can't get into it but we've been out a couple minutes so now we have beautiful ice cream that's cookies and cream all right let's grab a bowl and give this a try now, just so you guys all know, I have made this recipe multiple times, so I know it's going to be delicious. And my kids have been dying. Oh, no. My kids have been bugging me because they've been um, wanting to eat this ice cream. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to have some ice cream, and I'm going to let the kids dig in, too. Now... I know many of you haven't tasted this yet, but I have many times and it's delicious. But on screen, I'll share with you how great it is. Mm. So there is a very subtle maple flavor that comes through, but that's because we make our own maple syrup and it is a very smoky maple flavor. That's the way we uh, prefer it. Again, you could use sugar um and avoid that flavor altogether we just like to try to um make our ice cream maybe a little more natural uh vanilla is actually thomas's favorite um i'm not fussy i like them all all right guys thanks for hanging out with us on the farm in the kitchen as we make ice cream and i am going to go ahead and enjoy the rest of this ice cream we'll see you next time